Hello everyone. <clears throat> I'm going to continue on with this painting. Like I shared in my last video, I actually made a reference photo to go by. Um, <clears throat> like I described, uh, I use my, my computer. Um, I, I call it a digital art workstation. It's a computer that I uh, have set up specifically for doing um, art, digital art. Um, and uh, what I did is I took a photograph of the mountains and the sky that I had and I added the detail uh, that I'm going to use as a reference. I did it digitally and printed myself out a copy of it so that I could kind of have a basis to go by, a reference to go by. So I'm just going to start painting in the details to finish this painting and see how far I get. Okay, so thank you very much for staying with me and watching me because I started this video a little while back ago two or three videos back ago when it was just uh, basically a uh, s sketching in the sky with my brush so I, I tend to like to use my computer <clears throat> to come up with compositions because I have a lot of re uh, reference uh, images you know the uh, free stock photos and um, information on it um, including 3d rendering software that I use to create compositions digitally so let's see what I got here I'm making various values on my palette I call it a gradient so here's a darker blue and here's a lighter blue so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with just white now and go along that line I'm hoping my sketch is very hard to see here but I'm gonna uh, start basically sketching in what I what I'm hoping to achieve here, and hope it, it comes across. Um, it looks like it starts about here, and I might have to use you know of course multiple layers of of paint uh, to get the adjustment of of the way I want it to look. And I'm going to add a little bit of sunlight into that background because it shows it in my reference. So I'd like that to also show as well. Yes, that, that looks pretty close. Yes, it looks actually very, very close to the reference. I might uh, introduce a little of that blue back in there. But it does look like a snowdrift which is fine. That's what I want it to look like. And uh, it seems to get a little bit whiter down here because probably the sunlight is hitting the snow is probably what my concept was. And you know, when sunlight hits snow it gets brighter of course. Yes, that looks pretty good. It doesn't look, you know, it doesn't have to look 100% like the um, reference photo, as long as it's generally the same. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up a little bit with the white, just a little bit, kind of imply that the snow kind of drifts up on the rocks a little bit that are here. Kind of like, yeah, like that, cut it at an angle. Like maybe there's a little snow that's kind of resting on on the uh, very bottom part of the rock. I know I have it here, but I think I added a little bit of burnt umber to make it look a little darker, which makes sense because there might be a shadow here because the, the rock formation generally is dark. Then I'm going to add a little blue. I think a little a little bit of blue might help too. It changes it up. And being in shadow, there might be a little bit of a blue cast because blue, <clears throat> like I said in my one of my videos, previous videos, is blue <clears throat> tends to make things look in the distance, uh, but it also makes things look like it's also in the shadow. You know, a blue cast. I'm gonna add a little, a little more white here. Like there's more than one plane of snow here. Go into some pure white, like maybe some light is down here now. And it covers up the paint that was the base of the rock originally. 
Yeah. There we go. Put it on a little thicker, like there's a snow drift that's coming down. If that paint had been wet, if I'd done it wet on wet, where the rock, where the rock formation paint was still wet, it would have also did a good shadow effect. But I didn't do it when it was wet. I'm, I'm painting on it while it's dry now. So, but it still implies that there's things under the snow, rocks, and terrain under the snow. I'm going to go into just a little hint of gray here. I want to draw, drag a little gray along the this area because it does it kind of breaks it up a little again. Uh, again, it breaks it up a little bit and uh, gives the impression that there's tundra and things going on underneath the snow. I'm going to introduce a little a little light blue into this area here. Yes. And there's, it's a constant adjustment. Here's a little bit of a dirtier gray. But then over that I'll just put some plain white. It might be a little too thick. I'll use my finger. I often use my finger because it's just fast faster than getting my blender brush. I'll bring out my blender brush. Uh, they call it a mop brush or blender brush to soften areas, but really just using my finger just works fine. So now that we're approaching more in the center here where there's more light, I'm going to go less with the gray and more with more with the white. I'm going to glop it on and get this done faster. Yes. That's beautiful. I like that. Sometimes actually adding a little texture to your canvas is good. Leaving it a little bit thick in places. It gives it, it gives it that painterly look, you know? Because when people are buying the art, they like sometimes they like that texture. If they're if you're selling an original piece, uh, <clears throat> art collectors kind of like when they see that brushwork and that texture. So don't always feel you have to smooth everything out. Sometimes leaving it a little, a little bit textured, is a, is a nice effect. It gives it kind of a three-dimensional look too, because the texture is still there when it dries, <clears throat> and it almost looks like it's three-dimensional. I'm assuming the camera's still going. Yes, it's still going. We're not quite at eight minutes. This is going relatively fast, and I like that. I'm going to throw a little extra blue, a little bit darker blue in here because it's in my reference, which is fine. What it implies is a shadow, you know, because you've got different planes here. So it doesn't necessarily, when you have uh, different areas that where the uh, different piece, uh, areas of the snow drift meet, there might be gaps and that, that would look like a shadow kind of like a shadow and of course I might have a little bit too much it's a little bit too wide compared to my reference so I'll use a little gray to kind of emphasize that shadow and then I'll what I'll put some lighter uh, white there kind of thin that I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit it's okay it's a little too dark but we'll light we'll lighten that up and I think all these little things it just adds it just adds a little point of interest and a little more realism. Oh, I kind of like that little bit of blue that just showed up there. So yeah, it's it's always good and always kind of go the lay of the land, you know, when you're when you're doing it. Just kind of go in the direction you think the tundra or the you know the terrain is. Uh, so I'm gonna put a little more white. Yeah, if I use this liquid uh, clear, it's just a clear gel, it acts like a glaze, uh, it does a glazing effect, kind of like when oil painters use liquid. Uh, that way it's semi-translucent, the paint isn't fully, isn't fully, uh, uh, it, it quite, isn't quite as thick, so it lets some of that underpainting come through. And there, that, that lightened it up a little bit. And I want to draw that blue out. 
I think that looks good. You got to be careful when you're doing snow. You don't want it to look like it's water because sometimes there's a difference. Uh, different strokes give you different effects, and if you're doing it incorrectly, you could start making your snow look more like it's frozen water or water, a lake or something. So I'm just going to leave that little bit of a little bit of gray and a little bit of blue there, and yes. That looks really good. I'm going to go a, bit, a little bit wider with the light blue at the bottom here. And go back over it with white again. And then just blend it with my finger. Add a little touch of blue here coming off the side. Kind of a a little bit of an angle and blend it out and adding just that little bit of gray gives it a little impression of, of like I said soil or dirt under the snow the snow is sitting on top of dirt if this was in the summer there it would be browns and uh, areas of light which is usually like yellow ochre you put yellow ochre to imply light so it's it's coming together quite nicely and I I like it so far so good uh, everyone run, rub, runs into a little problem sometimes in a painting and uh, I don't want to cover up my sketch I kinda sketched out some um, vegetation I don't want to lose that where it begins so as I was saying in that uh, last video I was talking about composition when you're painting a scene, you want to paint the scene with kind of a, I call it, it's kind of like when they use the term feng shui, meaning, you know, everything's in its proper place that's conducive to happiness and health and all that. I, I guess it's a sort of a belief system, but it's the same thing with your, with your painting. You have to have a certain feng shui to your painting where things are in their proper place that makes the scene, uh, appealing to the eye and invites the viewer into your painting you don't want to have paintings that uh, that don't seem like it's inviting the viewer to come there you want to make it something pleasant so that when a person sees the painting thing more I could I wish I could just step into that scene and experience that place you know that you're creating and some a lot of times it's from my imagination you know so <clears throat> I'm not saying I dream these places, but I have thought a lot and seen so much photography, including my own. I just kind of have an idea of what's, you know, what's pleasant to the eye. But uh, that just comes with time after you've seen and viewed so many landscapes that you just start getting a kind of a sense of it, of what's good and what's bad about what you like about a certain scene and not. So I think I'm pretty much done with the snow. Let me look at this. Now I do imply that there's a little mist here. So the way I think I'm going to do that is I'm going to use um, some kind of blender brush. Maybe I'll use this uh, very soft mop. It's a larger one. Just go into a little touch of white and dab it so that there's not quite as much paint there. Kind of thin it out. So it's just a just a hint of white, and what I'll do is kind of um, I think it might need to still be a little too much there. What I'll do, I, I probably should wait till that dries, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it and see if it if I like it. It's still a little too still a little too wet, I think. But I'll take my little mop brush and I'll just dither this out or fan it out to give the impression that there's sort of a a little bit of a um, mist you know because ice would put off like a a frosty mist if it's cold so it's kind of like a fog almost and I'm just using my blender brush to soften that and give that impression that there's just a little bit of atmosphere there you know a little bit of fog a little bit of mist and so this brush is a little bit too big a little bit but I kind of like the texture it's giving it's kind of a nice effect in fact, if I dither that out in the mid-ground, it kind of does look like a haze. 
it's a little bit on the wet side, but still too wet, but it's fine. I think it'll all work. I want to give the impression of a mist or a haze or a fog or something there. Because I'll tell you what, atmosphere really will add realism to your, your piece. If you, if you think about uh, looking in the distance, there's always going to be some kind of atmosphere, or, you know, fog or mist or something, especially in a colder envi environment like this. And it's, it would make sense that, that there would be this fog or mist. And I don't blend everything out. I always leave a little bit of that texture because it just, uh, fog would have denser areas in it. Yes, that actually does start starting to look a little more like fog now. I'll put it here too. And uh, I just use a soft blender brush and kind of blend it out. And it does. It just looks like there's a little bit of mist, a little bit of haze. Maybe even it's just faint uh, snow drifts going up against the rocks. Gives it, it just adds to the realism of the piece and by doing this. It, now that the, the uh, paint is starting to dry a little on the brush, it's, it's actually giving me a better effect than when I first started, when it was too wet. And I'll just dither that out. I might have it go up a little bit, like between the rocks, like there's a little haze here between the rocks. Oh, that's great. Yes, yes. You can always use your finger to kind of remove it. I like that effect. It looks looks like there's a little mist or fog between the rocks there. Yeah, wonderful. Beautiful. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that back here too. Right, right here in the background, like there's a little bit of uh, haze or mist hitting those far off places in the back. And I'm just going to go and use broader strokes. See, it just gives the impression of mist. In fact, it would be good to have a little mist here. Um, not, that's a little too much, but I'll just use my finger and blend it out. And I will also, in my reference, they kind of imply there might be even little tundra and trees uh, here. And I'm going to just clean off the rest of my brush on the on this area to kind of imply maybe there's a little bit of clouds in the sky. I mean, I might as well since I've got a little paint on my brush. Why waste it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It just adds to the atmospheric feeling of the piece. Just as long as I don't use my lose my uh, spot where I'm going to put my sun. I'm going to put my sun right about there. Yeah, I like that look. I might as well just clean my brush off in the sky, right? Since this is where the sun is going to be, I'm going to definitely emphasize clouds that are highlighted over here, over here on the right. Yeah, uh, just kind of maintain that look of clouds. Oops, starting to dry, so I'm going to stop now. Once it starts to dry on you, you want to stop because what that does is it just <laughs> it becomes a mess um, when you feel the paint is kind of pull. So I think a little bit, a bit of this is not covered enough. So I think I'm going to go back and forth a little bit with a, a little little areas that kind of blend blend it out a little of gray, like maybe there's a little bit of shadowing going on there, which is fine. Yes, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm going to go into just a, a hint of burnt umber, too, and do the same thing. Just just kind of, because it kind of shows in the reference, there's this little bit of, whoop, a little too much, a little too much. There's this little bit of burnt umber, it kind of comes down like that, which is implying there might be some dirt in the rock here. Hmm. Drag that out. Now go back into a little white and kind of repair that. Yeah. There's actually a lot more white here for some reason. I'll just add to it. Sometimes I don't think this camera is picking up all the subtleties. One of the people commented I should put a little more. A variation in the rock, you know, color and value. But 
actually there's quite a bit there it's just that it's not uh, I don't think the camera the video camera is picking up the subtleties but while, what I'll do is I'll take a picture of this thing when I'm done this uh, composition uh, with my high resolution camera it'll pick up all the subtleties that I'm seeing that maybe is not coming across in the video just a little bit of dirt let's put a little dirt right here oh, just a little bit just a little bit just by putting that little bit of gray it breaks it up a little bit makes it look and then I'll add some blue now here's my mister bottle I use this really fine mister I have two mister bottles one's a bigger one but it puts out bigger droplets and sometimes it's too, a little too wet and uh, I don't care I don't care for it when it's too wet because it, it, if it's too wet then it, it's, it's, it's just as bad as if it's too dry, if the paint's too dry. So, yeah, and then I have my, let's clean that brush off. That's the thing is when you're painting lighter values and you, you pick up paint, dirty paint, you want to clean off your brush just to uh, get rid of the dirty paint. Again, I'm trying to give that textury look, so I'm leaving some not quite as blended at the bottom here. So I think uh, pretty much done with the uh, with it as far as the snow goes. Yeah, put a little texture, a little brighter texture here, like there's a snow drift here. Oop. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, I like these little bits of, of texture. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, get a, a Filbert brush, but I need to get one for acrylic, um, a smaller Filbert. Let's see what I got here. One that would give me a little, uh, some nice um, texture. Also, I'll do a fan, a fan brush too. Don't mix your oil paint brushes with your acrylic paint. Not good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this white a little bit that I had put down and put some black but I'm also going to put a little bit of dark green because I want it to give the impression that that that's trees trees might have a dark green a little hint of it yeah yeah there we go and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down with my brush and kind of spread it out you know like the Three Stooges used to say spread out okay and I'm just because uh, I want to get those individual hairs because what I want to do is I want to just basically tap in the direction that there would might be trees and put little indications that there's little trees on this ridge yes like that uh, to do that, I might lift up a little bit. See, by lifting up just a little bit, going up, it kind of implies the tree. There's a little ridge of trees there. And then skip places. Don't go solid. Just barely touch it, going back and forth where you think the trees might be. Because I think there's trees in this ridge. And according to my reference that I made, I did. I kind of put a texture as if there is trees here yes I think it looks better that way it really does and then as the paints running out which is cool it doesn't put quite out quite as much paint out now I'm going to use my finger just to kind of blur areas because if you notice a photograph isn't always 100 percent sharp especially when things are in the distance uh, things tend to be out of focus a lot in the distance. I'm going to put a few trees here on this ridge. I 
like there's a little bit of trees going on there. Just go up with the edge of my brush and maybe, maybe so, maybe so. But blur it out because it's... Yes, I like this. There's like trees in the shadows. And there's that color that the person was asking about. Asking about whether I was putting enough variety of color. Okay, I need to put a little bit of white there. Beautiful. Okay. Now, let's uh, re-emphasize some of these areas with this little bit of yellow. I'm going to go into just a hint of yellow because it looks like I've got a little bit of yellow going on here. Not just, not a lot, just a little. I guess because there's sunlight hitting these areas. Let's see if I've got... Uh, where am I doing time-wise? I'm almost up. I'm almost a half an hour. I'm not quite a half an hour. Like 25, 26 minutes into it. Yes, I like that little bit of golden because when I do the sky, the sun's going to have a little bit of yellow in it. It's going to be a little bit of a, a yellow cast to the light in this painting. So it looks good that, and would make sense there would be a little yellow possibly hitting in the back there where the sun is coming down. In fact, I think, and my reference doesn't really show it, but I'm thinking I should put a little of that yellow in the foreground, too. Maybe just a little. Let's see how that looks. Right in the center. It draw, that'll draw a little bit of interest to the eye. I think that is good. Yes, I didn't put it in the reference, but I kind of like it. So, you know, you don't always have to go 100% by the reference. You can add your own little flair to things. Yes, just that little hint of yellow in the snow looks good. By the way, don't ever eat yellow snow. <laughs> Somebody told me that one time. <laughs> oh, yeah, especially on this side because the light's going to be coming from the right. Yes, that's actually going to be really great. I like that little bit of yellow right there in the foreground. It looks like the light's going to hit right in that area. That's beautiful. I'm not going to do it over the whole thing because I don't want to be... I don't go crazy with the yellow, but it just gives it kind of that little warm cast that the light, the sunlight hitting the will be. So um, what I'm going to do next, I guess, is the vegetation, the snow-covered vegetation and the trees. i got to put trees here and trees on the right. This is my reference photo that I made. If I didn't share it with you already, this is the reference. So there's going to be trees on the left, trees on the right, and snow-covered vegetation. I'm going to leave this open so it's inviting. Like I said, composition, you want to make the people viewing your painting feel that they're welcome, that they're able to even walk into this painting. So I'm leaving it open here. So even though it's not a pathway, like a road or a path, it's still invites you because it's open here. There's nothing blocking the viewer from imagining themselves stepping into this scene. And once I finish that, this will be a done painting. So thank you very much for watching and you all have a wonderful day. And I will take a quick video of the painting where it is so far. And I may blend this yellow, cover that yellow a little bit. It's a little bit too bright here on the left. Just a little bit, because I do want to imply there's some sunlight. And as you can see, if the camera's picking it up, there is a variety of color. But when I took a photograph, for some reason, it looked mostly white. So there is some yellow golden light. And once I add the sun and the clouds, it will emphasize that atmospheric with that golden light look. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.